Tired of trawling the internet looking for how to use Illustrator specifically for quilt pattern designing? Join me, I'm going to be sharing my top three tips on how to use Illustrator specifically for designing quilt patterns. Welcome and thank you for joining me for this short bonus of my top three tips of how to get started designing quilts in Illustrator. So first of all, let's start off with the grid. This is something you might not use if you're used to drawing more freehand things in Illustrator. So I just wanted to show you something that I find really useful, especially when drawing block-based quilt designs. So we'll come up to edit and we'll go down to preferences and we'll just open up the preferences menu on general. I set up my document if I'm drawing a quilt design in inches so that it corresponds with what I'm gonna be drawing and the sizes that I'm gonna be working with then I'm going to come and have a look at guides and grid and in the grid section down here you can customize the color of the grid that you're going to use. So you can either use lines or dots, I prefer lines. And I want to set up my grid line to be every one inch and I want to have 12 subdivisions. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. In order to see the grid we need to come to view, we need to come down to show grid. So here you can see when my document's at 100%, I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 subdivisions per block here. Okay, so that was what the 12 was that we set up before. And each of these represents one inch. Now, if I zoom out to uh, 50%, you might only see six divisions. So just be aware of that, that if you do set something up to 12 divisions and you're not seeing the 12 divisions, you're going, why aren't I seeing 12 divisions? It might be because you just zoomed out. So at 50%, it'll only show you the six divisions. But if you zoom in again, it'll show you the 12, 12 divisions. If you keep zooming in, it's not gonna show you any more divisions. You'll just get a bigger, bigger view of what you can see there. Okay, so that's the grid. The other thing we wanna do is come up to view and we want to select snap to grid. So this will ensure that any shapes and lines and things that we're drawing for our block-based quilt designs will snap to the grid and this makes it so much easier to work out your uh, pattern later on as well. What I want to do is show you the divide below tool. So I want to maybe draw, let's say we'll draw this sawtooth star together and I'll show you that from our um, exercise before. So I want to come in here, I'm going to select my rectangle tool, so M shortcut and you can see here that it is snapping to the grid perfectly. This is exactly what I want to do. So it's going increment by increment. I can either drag it down here and I know that I've got a perfect square because I've got 12 by 12. Or I could do maybe something else that you're used to doing, which is holding down the shift key. And I'm going to get the perfect square just like that. Either way, if you're snapping to grid, you'll be able to get a perfect square pretty easily. Oh yeah, I keep my stroke at about what, 0.25 points. Just makes it a little bit lighter to see. Okay, and now I want to draw a half square triangle, let's say. So I'm going to get my line tool and I'm going to draw from this corner all the way down to this corner. You can see as I'm moving it's trying to snap to all of these points, which is what we want. But what I really want to do is to snap it right down to that point there. Now with this line selected, I can come up to Object, Path, Divide Objects Below. And instead of having a line and a square like we had before, now what I have two triangles like this. So they're my half square triangles. Instead of having a shape that I can't fill or that will fill all together uh, with one color, now I have two separate shapes. So now if I wanted to just create the fill on this shape, I can create a yellow fill and on this side I can leave it white or uh, black or whatever color I want to fill in there. Okay, so then I can, that's gonna help me create my half square triangles for my quilt pattern. So we are kind of still working at this big scale here. So what I want to do now is just to do a quick drawing of the block that we were looking at earlier, the sawtooth star. We'll just draw it at full scale so you guys can see how I would do this. Okay, so here we've got our square in the middle and okay, now I'm going to draw my three inches by three inches half square triangle. Here we go. And I'm gonna go object, path, divide objects below. And I've got my two half square triangles here. I'm gonna drag this down here to snap right there. And then I'm gonna hold down my option key and make a copy. And I'm gonna rotate that. And I'm going to copy these two together. 
and I'm gonna hold down my option key and drag them down to the bottom. And they're snapping as you can see and then I wanna rotate this as well because we want our half square triangles going in the other way. I'm gonna select both of these sets now of half square triangles. I'm gonna hold option, drag them across over here. I'm just gonna rotate them and drag them back again, V. There we go, snapping straight in there. And there you go, we've got our beautiful half square triangles. So I'm gonna select all of these shapes, all selected. And I'm putting drawers to black. So now I've got my sawtooth star block and I can start, I can start duplicating this block to start making my quilt pattern. And then I'm gonna show you this select seam and how that's powerful. So here we go. I'm going to select all there and I'm going to hold down my option key and drag it across and see it's snapping and I want it to snap obviously right next door. Come in at control D, compare D uh, and I can get that to go repeating across there. And again, same thing, I'm going to do my option, drag it down and it's still snapping to grid. You can hold on to the shift key as well to make sure it's in line but it's still snapping to our grid. And I'm going to go command D a few times as well and we've got our cool pattern. And there we go, we can see that on this cool block, we're gonna have one, two, three inches, three inch half square triangles, and in the middle here, we've got a six inch block. So that can count the number of grid squares that I've got. And that really helps give you a shortcut for when you're trying to count up the number of squares that you've gotta have. The last tip I wanted to give you guys was on select seam. So you can do it with the magic wand tool. You can come in here and you can select the black and change the appearance of that pretty easily. The other thing you can do is you can come in and if it's no fill there, what you can do is you can select this big square in the middle. You can select this larger square, select same shape, and it'll select all of the big squares for you. So then you can fill those with a certain color. So then you've got the background color all selected. The other thing you can do is you can also come up to select same fill color and change that as well. There you go. So there are easy ways to select the same things and change the background color and things like that. So there you have it. There were my top three tips for getting started with quilt designs in Illustrator. I hope you found this extra bonus useful. And if you need to get in touch anytime, you can get in touch with me by email. You can find me on Instagram or via my website. Thanks again and I can't wait to see what you're going to make next. <laughs>